This is 2019 AME 1 problem number 15 and here is a view of this problem. Uh, let AB be a chord on this circle omega. Let's go ahead and just uh, draw a chord. Uh, so something like this I would say. Let's label this point as A and this point as B. Then we will be picking a point P in the following way. So P would be closer to B than it is to A. I would say somewhere here maybe. Okay, so this is where the point P is. Apparently this distance here is a 3 and this one here is a 5. And then we will go ahead and draw two circles, omega 1 and omega 2. They will be both internally tangent to omega and they will also go through the points AP and BP respectively. So how do you do that? How do you draw circles which are, which are internally tangent to each other? Well, the, the easiest way for that probably is to first identify the center of the big circle omega. So let's call this label this center as O. And because of the homotety between omega 1 and omega, uh, the center of these internally uh, tangent circles will be on OA, for instance, for omega, omega 1. And in a similar way, omega 2, its center will be somewhere on uh, OB. So something like this. Okay, so therefore, but where exactly? It will be on the perpendicular bisector of AP and BP respectively. So the perpendicular bisector of AP may be somewhere close here. So that would be the point O1. We can now go ahead and uh, draw a rough sketch. Obviously, I don't have any measuring tool here in front of me. So I'll just do my best uh, eyeballing the circle, probably something like this. Okay, this is a horrible circle, uh, but... Uh, Yes, so um, so this is a circle which is uh, internally tangent to omega sent, uh, at the point A. And in a similar way, I can draw another circle uh, internally tangent at point B. Its center will be somewhere on the perpendicular bisector, probably here. Uh, that's where O2 will be. Uh, so maybe something like this, I would say. All right, so uh, and uh, the uh, this is the, the point Q. Uh, the second point of intersection. Let me remove that label here. And we are finally told that uh, PQ obviously is the, um, is the radical axis. We extend them to meet the circle at X and Y. So let's go ahead and use a different color, maybe back to red. So I'll just go ahead and uh, extend this and this side. So let this point be X, if you will. And let's mark this one as a y. Uh, and the question basically, given that x, y is 11, uh, we want to find pq uh, squared. Uh, before I do so, uh, let's um, remember that because pq is the radical axis of omega 1 and omega 2, so we decided to call this one omega 1, this one omega 2, it will be perpendicular to the line segment O1, O2, right? So this is a 90 degree angle, if you will. All right. So now uh, we can begin. Uh, let, let me change my marker. So uh, one thing is clear because OA is equal to OB. OA is equal to OB and they are both the radius of that omega circle omega. Uh, that would imply that this angle is congruent to this angle over here. We have an isosceles triangle. Uh, so implies a triangle uh, AOB is isosceles. Well, by the same token, I think it kind of makes sense to connect O2 to P and O1 to P as well. When you connect O2 to P, that little circle BO2P is also isosceles. So as a result, that angle is also equal to this one. And by the same token, O1P connected, uh, this angle is also equal to that one. So we have four congruent angles here. But what's more important is the fact that now we have, uh, for instance, this angle here, is corresponding with this angle. Corresponding angles suggest that we have parallel lines. So um, this line is parallel to this line. And by the same token, uh, because this angle is equal to that one, that suggests that uh, these two sides are also parallel. So this side is parallel to this one. So uh, let's write that down. So therefore, uh, O01 is parallel to oops, uh, O2P. O2P and uh, O1P is parallel to O1P is parallel to OO2. Now that's pretty neat. 
but we have a parallelogram regardless so let's write that down let's change the marker so uh, and this implies o o one p o o one p o two is a parallelogram that's crucial and like in any parallelogram the uh, diagonal for instance diagonal o one o two would split the parallelogram into two congruent triangles right and as a result this implies triangle say for instance o1 p o2 o1 p o2 is congruent to o2 o o1 o2 o o1 but then uh, at this step it's time to now question the the point q now right so far we were able to relate the point p to the other uh, important points like O01 and O2 for instance and A and B but we have no information about the point Q yet so it's the right moment to uh, and at this step probably I'll go ahead and draw the picture a little bit larger so everyone can see what's going on so I'll go ahead and uh, connect Q uh, to O1 and O2 the centers and I, I will also connect it to O as well in the end um, okay so let, let me go ahead and move O a little bit away from here because it's not uh, straight. Okay, so there you go. So probably O is somewhere here, I would say. Okay, good. So let's go ahead and uh, connect Q to O2 and O1. And next, I have a question for everybody. Okay, so once I connected Q, okay, so this is horrible. But okay, um, ah, so maybe I should redraw this. Okay, one more, yes. Okay, so all I do is connect O1 and Q. All right, so the question I have is that uh, the shape of O1, P, O2, Q. O1, P, O2, Q. Well, what is that shape? It's definitely not a parallelogram, but it is, yeah, I assume you guys are already pausing the video. It is actually a kite. Well, what do I mean? I mean, look at the diagonals of this shape, O1, P, O2, Q. The diagonals are O1, O2 and P, Q, but these are perpendicular like I suggested early in the video, right? Because P, Q is a radical axis of the circles omega 1 and omega 2, it should be perpendicular to O1, O2, the, the, the line segment connecting the two centers of those circles. So that shape is a kite. But because it's a kite, O1, O2 is a symmetry axis, and as a result, uh, triangle uh, O1, P, O2, for instance, this one is also congruent to uh, is also congruent to uh, well, actually, let, let's do it this way. So triangle O1, P, O2 is also congruent to O1, uh, Q, O2. Triangle O1, Q, O2. But because uh, congruence is transitive it means that those two triangles are congruent now aha so that's the big moment now so we have triangle o2 q01 is congruent to uh, o1 o02 two congruent triangles next to each other uh, obviously o10 is congruent to equal to o o2q let's write that down uh, so therefore um, well, let's first write that down first. So therefore, we have a triangle O2, O, O1 congruent to triangle uh, O1, Q, O2, implying that, say, for instance, O, O1 is equal to segment O1 is equal to O2, Q. And um, and and we the the shapes are obviously uh, due to symmetry. It's just a reflection. For instance, if you reflect O2, Q. Um, along the perpendicular bisector of O1, O2, it will map itself directly onto O1, O. So what I'm saying is that um, as a result, we get a shape which is a trapezoid. So now this is the third shape that I'm introducing. So, so far I mentioned a parallelogram, next a kite, and now a trapezoid. Yes, indeed. So we have O1, O2, Q, O is a trapezoid just by symmetry i would say right so uh, and as a result the bases are parallel to each other for instance oq here is a base is parallel to o1 o2 so that would apply oq the base is parallel to o1 o2 but wait earlier we know that o1 o2 was perpendicular to pq suggesting also that as a result oq is also perpendicular to uh, PQ, but if that's the case, PQ is along the chord XY. 
So a perpendicular from the center O of our circle to XY would hit XY at its midpoint. So that would further imply that Q is, is, oh gosh, Q is, let's write that down again, midpoint, midpoint of XY. And in a sense, this is the crux move of this problem. Uh, now we can finish off the problem. All we need is now to apply power of point P find the power of point P with respect to two different segments. For instance, we can calculate the power of point P with respect to the segment APB, and we can also do it with respect to the chord XPY, and set them equal to each other. We should be able to finish the problem. Let me go ahead and uh, do it on this side. So, so far we know that Q is the midpoint. Uh, so, let's go ahead. So, power of uh, point P uh, with respect to omega. Uh, we will calculate it in two different ways. So, is equal to, well, first of all, it's equal to AP, or let's write the equal sign here, I would say, AP times uh, PB, but it's also equal to uh, XP times PY. Well, AP times uh, PB is just uh, 5 times 3, and XP times PY, if you label XP as little x, lowercase x, PY would be just uh, 11 minus X because remember that XY was given as 11. So, um, sorry for that. So, we would get here 11 minus X and that would imply 15 is equal to 11 X minus uh, X square. And moving things into the same side, onto the same side, 11 X plus 15 is equal to 0 using the quadratic formula x will come out as minus minus 11 is 11 plus or minus square root 11 square is 121 minus 4 times 15 all divided by 2 uh, which is equal to 11 over 2 plus or minus square root 121 minus 60 is 61 all divided by 2. Well we have plus and minus one of the, them will designate xp the other one will be for yp so x would be the the, the smaller one uh, so therefore uh, this implies xp is equal to 11 over 2 minus root 61 over 2 and yp is equal to 11 over 2 plus root 61 all divided by 2 but the question was asking for pq so therefore finally pq which is equal to say xq minus uh, xp but xq is just half of xy, which is just 11 over 2 minus. xp is just, we just found it here, uh, 11 over 2 minus root 61 over 2. Well, the 11 over 2s cancel each other. And as a result, pq comes out as root 61 over 2. But the question is asking for pq squared. And that's just 61 over 4. Finally, uh, the overall question was to find m plus n, where m and n are the numerator and the denominator of pq squared. So 61 over 4, 61 plus 4 is 65, is the uh, answer uh, to this problem. So let's write that down here, 0, 6, 5. Uh, alternatively, you could have used... Um, uh, there are quite a few different ways to solve this problem, and I uh, highly recommend you check the AOPS uh, community page related to this problem. Alternatively, because there was uh, three circles invo involved in this picture, uh, we could have used um, the radical axis theorem as well. Let me go, go ahead and, uh, at the expense of ruining this picture, uh, <laughs> uh, just go ahead and find the radical axis of these three circles pairwise. So, obviously, the radical axis of omega 1 and omega 2 was just PQ or XY, if you will. And in a similar way, the radical axis of omega 1 and omega, the big circle, would be the tangent at the point A. So if you go ahead and draw the tangent at the point A, and similarly, the radical axis of omega 2 and omega would be the tangent at the point B, um, apparently, right, due to the radical axis theorem, those three, uh, uh, those three uh, uh, radical axes would meet, okay, so this is definitely not good, okay, so let's just, oh yeah, I think this one is pretty bad, okay, there you go. All right, so those three radical axes will meet at the same point due to the radical axis theorem, and let's call this point as T, if you will. Uh, now, what's uh, what's nice is we can come up with the same idea of, of figuring that Q is the midpoint of XY by just noticing first that ATB 
O, A, T, B, O is a cyclic quadrilateral and the reason being that these two angles are 90 degrees uh, because we have tangencies here. And further, noticing that Q is also on that circle and one easy way to notice that is to that for, you can start with these two congruent angles. Obviously, they have to be congruent because we have equal um, tangents here. Uh, T, B is equal to T, A. As a result, those angles are the same. But angle T, A, P is equal to, uh, or um, uh, yeah, angle TAP, it subtends this minor arc, but that that minor arc is also subtended by, uh, by what? By the angle AQP, right? And uh, that thing is not necessarily a collinear, so let's pretend it's this straight line. Okay, so this is a pretty bad line, so let's do it again. Um, so yeah, so the, the straight line between A and Q is not necessarily uh, going through the point O, so yeah. So therefore, uh, do you guys agree that this angle would also subtending the same arc is also equal to those two angles? So angle TAP or TAB is congruent to angle uh, AQP, but wait, because TAB was earlier equal to TBA, so we have these two angles which they both uh, oversee uh, the arc AT, so therefore Q is on that same circle. So basically A, O, Q, B, T are concyclic points, and O, T is obviously the diameter of that circle because, uh, because of these 90 degree angles, they subtend O, T. As a result, Q, angle O, Q, T is also 90 degrees, and boom, so that would also establish again that Q is the midpoint of X, Y again. Um, yeah, like I said, there's quite a few alternative ways to uh, solve this problem. For instance, you can use projective geometry, noticing that the points uh, T, X, P, and Q are harmonic. That would be an alternative, sorry, T, X, P, and Y are harmonic. So that's an alternative way to approach this problem. Again, an, 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 another way would be if you follow my uh, playlist about the simedians, it's quite easy to notice that Q is the simedian point um, of, uh, say, triangle AXB. And as a result, you can also follow in along those lines as well. So there, there are many approaches uh, to attempt this problem. Pretty neat problem. I uh, hope you enjoyed it and looking forward to see you guys in our next uh, lecture.